Good evening. Another week, another stack of music. Uh, we are going to listen to the thing that just came in, the Invisible Manuscript of Force, a, a compilation with a lot of genres. I'm not even sure. It could be black metal, it could be gabber. Uh, here we go. You'll see. Cough Skull Collective, I think from Canada, because um, the man who sent this to me, thank you very much for this. Um, a double tape, by the way. He is from Canada. This came out on Unmatched Dominance, on Hodge and Pit, on some German label on CD. Um, it was widespread all over the place, and uh, yeah, finally managed to get one. The Hodge and Pit, of course, is the not the superior one because this is the of the label himself, of, of the collector himself. But yeah, um, optics are on point all over the place. There is a card in here that doesn't bring any clarification. There's some more artwork. I'm not going to dwell too long on the tape, but since I'm not doing a tape delay anytime soon, I showed everything I have, except for a few tapes. Uh, I decided to show this on now, and it's a party atmosphere, so why not? There will be some harsh shit on here, so let's see how far we'll get. There you go, Cough Skull Collective, Whitefield, thank you for the support, I hope you enjoy, brother. It is you I have to thank for the support. Um, I paid import on it. And Please send person to person. I'd rather pay you what I paid customs than um, it's just money down the drain. This is the entire list. Coughs Co Collective presents the Invisible Manuscript of Force, and then there is a ton of bands that I. This on my pussy, for example, Howitzer, Bloodrin, Hakan Fault, which uh, was recommended, Numinous Combatants, Storm of Baal, Unknown Artists, always handy, Kaleidoscope, Autistic Blood, Odentir, that's cool. My True Destiny, Dolchtos, Pagan, Blossom, Old Ways, and Bring Them In Heaps. Kofsko originated out of the out of frustration, now let Kofsko die, so not sure if anything will come up, but um, yeah, interesting compilation worldwide, I think, or yeah, pretty sure worldwide. Collage by at Blood Ties. Uh, I'm did not tag that one, but yeah, very nice collage. He asked who uh, could do a collage for him, then decided not to use it as a cover, but as an extra poster. So, still. Thank you very much. This, uh, I always call it beyond appreciated, but uh, that is what it is. Thank you for support this way. Crazy. They have to ship it, they have to make it, and then, you know. I let it shine. There you go. Tough call. A lot of people looking for this, I think. Um, yeah, try to get your hands on it. Tape delay last week. Uh, like I said, it was very un underprepared, not unprepared, but um, that's because I didn't have anything to listen to at work where I spent most of my days, like everyone. I rectified the situation and I finally found one. It's a well working, affordable, beaten up copy of a DD3 Quartz uh, Sony Walkman. So expect full tape delays to come out soon. I'm going to do the tapes I <clears throat> showed in the last video, or I glanced over as my last four, but these are from, um, I'm not going to say where I got them from, I mentioned the distro before, a lot of records will come out of that, look in other uh, videos for the hints, I'm uh, not going to, I decided I'm not going to kill my dicks boss, but yeah, cheers. To Finland, the first one I got was Ferdi Dirk. Here you go. This is a tape from. Um, it's been a while since this came out because this is on Klaxon Records. I'm not sure the year it came out, but this is a rehearsal and a demo. Demo is from 2006. The rehearsal is from 2005. Both recorded at Black House. And Freddie Dirk is a band uh, or a side project. Um, I would say in the vein of Bone Owl, all the one gash, all the combative US black metal that came out of punk or vice versa. Um, Grand Moods is in there, the CW stable. Comparable to Svetovit, Brother, Brotherhood of Light, Frill Heart, Old One Gash, all that stuff. Uh, this is a bit more, the, the rehearsal is rougher than the demo. It is uh, it's harder and faster maybe. Uh, the volume is better on the other side actually. Um, it is, like I said, black metal punk uh, US, but then it has that um, 
kind of has that link to Midwestern hardcore, uh, like Mind Razor, things that happened in Denver. That brutality is also in there, although it's, yeah, it's a thing of their own. Um, this is the Jake Art, like I said, on Clock Song. This is not with the members, it's just a weird cross on there, but they have the one with the members too, which I like. Uh, the demo is jangly, it has that jangly US sound. Um, it's almost any Morricone in some parts. It is kind of westerny, um, like a chaotic honky tonk that has been lit on fire in hell. Uh, I've written down in the afternoon. Uh, so yeah, it's a very rough US black metal tonk sound. Not stompy, but um, yeah, it's weird. The, uh, the twang is uh, in both the demo and the rehearsal, but less in the rehearsal. So um, like it, love that circle to death. Pretty Dirk, great name. Then a Irish one-man project and a Forbidden Citadel of Spirits. This is the split with Anna Care or Ina Care. I'm not sure. I was in love with this artwork. Uh, like I said last time, it was used for the Skull Skill compilation uh, LPs from Forbidden Citadel of Spirits. Um, there we go. This is the front artwork that was in the gatefolds. Like I said, Anacare, I don't know too much about him. He has a few splits, few releases, all on tape. I think all self-released, not sure. And he's from Ireland. It all looks very, I kind of recognize his photo, but there was no other bands linked in there. So I don't know. I think he is about eight releases deep, something like that. Winterreich um, Productions, there is something there, but it's unreadable. There you go. This is the only picture I have on Instagram that got lowered in feet. I'm not sure why. Um, there's no nudity in here apart from maybe that's BDSM nipples. I'm not sure. Or it could be Winterreich. Really not sure. Yeah, weird. But finally, grab the copy. Um, always thought I would. There it is. Um, yeah, just a great. Great Aussie or Tasmanian Irish noisy as hell tape. Then Sarcophago Satanic Christs. This is a demo compilation. Uh, everything prior to N E N R I uh, with dots. Still uh, gushing over that find. Here we go. That will come up. Maybe I'll tag on the um, Cotton in the Wild onto this because. You don't have too much, um, didn't went to two record store. This is the Sarcophago Satanic Christ, as I said. This is a kind of a bootleggy tape of their um, rehearsals and demos, or just demos. Demo, demo, rehearsal, live, and then, mm -hmm, yeah, live in 88. So the demo, Satanic Lost, is from 86. Christian's Dead, Christ's Dead, sorry, Christian, is from 87, and the rehearsal is from 88. There you go. So all tracks that are on the first full, except tracks not on here are the last two, I think. <laughs> Ready to fuck eat that trash or the last slaughter um, are new tracks on here. Yeah, I just noticed Ready to fuck eat the other day. So yeah, neat compilation tape of all their early material. Brazilian bands. Bella Horizonte, I'm not sure, I think so. Then, on an everlasting Black Legions of Légion Noir, Flat Tapas with War Funeral March, not Merch. Um, there you go. That was the first mistake in the last video. I kind of apologize to some people because they, they sent me stuff and then I kind of underwhelm underwhelmed them, underwhelmed the takes by uh, showing them and not talking about them. Yeah, it was a long, long video. Anyway, let's talk about this one. This is the, not the self-released version, this is the version on Full Moon Productions or Records. Full Moon Productions, uh, which started in 94. Now this tape is from 94, not from 97 or 98. It was the second mistake. Um, so yeah, this came out, this is the US version on Full Moon Productions, which is a label uh, I kind of liken it to Paniac Records in Belgium, so that kind of label. Early 90s that were on top of it. Um, yeah, releasing just the stuff in their neighborhood, um, quote unquote, because French on, um, on an American label, he was one of the guys, his name is, I've written it down, I think. 
Yom, John Torn's Yamshit, I think. Um, yeah. Label ran to from 94 to 2012, 2010, 2012. Um, and he also did the Petrified Zine, which is uh, yeah something to behold. He did Legion Noir. He also did um, Boozum, for example. He did Hades, the early stuff. So yeah, all the re-releases from Hades are with uh, Nuclear War now. But we're talking about this tape, and we have a lot of things to cover. So let's hurry on. Flat Tapes. This came out on '94. I always liked their sound a bit, a bit, a bit better than uh, Mutilation just because of the production maybe. Um, I wouldn't say better songwriting, but it has moments where you can just bang your heads. Um, mutilation has it also, but it's just a tinge roar. Uh, Vlad Drak Drakstein, Vorlok Drakstein. This is Celtic and Barbarian black metal ruled by the voices of the Black Legion spirits. Very cool tape. I kind of prefer this artwork. Um, the original cover is maybe better uh, because it's um, Legion Noir photo, but um, love this too. And then, yeah, it has just more pictures like the, the black and white. So, yeah. Uh, five tracks on here? Yes. Five tracks. Uh, War Funeral March in the Grey Mist on a Full Moon Night from the Celtic Moonfrost Wallachian Tyrant returning to my old Battlegrounds Frozen Dead Kingdom. They have a little bit more. Um, Wiggle Room, I think, Mutilation is basically the vampires in the castle. This is, there's more into Vlad Tepes for me to discover, I think, still. So, that is a good thing. We are still playing Invisible Manuscript, of course, because it surprised me in how not black metal it was, actually, up until now. So, let's dive in. Let's start with a piece of merch first. This has been laying around, it has been on the wall, it has come down. This is basically the last thing Uchfaust was going to do. A gigantic coffin-shaped back patch with a uh, big-ass cloud going all over it. So, yeah. Rest in peace, Uchfaust. I need to find a permanent spot. It's probably going in to the last record, the last record which I um, unfortunately still not have, but yeah. You can't get them all, and I have a lot of book posts. Into the records. Um, 11 minutes, 12 minutes on tapes and a patch. So, yeah. This came from Fort directly. Uh, Fuck off and die records from Italy, I think. They re released the Bulldozer, the Exorcism, and uh, I think the original came out, or the original re release on Fort came out in something like 2012, 2013. Because that's when the, all the texts were written on the li liner notes. It is originally from '84, and it's the Italian answer to Phantom, I guess. Um, but yeah, there you go. This is the re-release of the seven-inch. There is a um, the front. They all have that, you know, incredible over there playing. Belgium, the first date in Belgium, um, but I don't think anybody wants to go with me. It's in Ostende, so at the beach. But yeah. Could be interesting. Uh, Sodom is also playing. I don't know what the festival is called, but yeah, here we go. Bulldozer, The Exorcism, nice Obi on there, and Ford is one of those labels that do a lot of good shit. I don't know if I have. Yeah, I have poison stuff from them. So yeah, they do some good stuff, but they're all over the place. They're into Italian hardcore punk, into, yeah, it's all Italian, but not everything is Italian because they also did the Typhoon and stuff like that. Yeah, interesting label, a lot of re-releases. This is an, uh, an original drawing from AC Wild, the singer uh, that was originally on a t-shirt, I guess, one of the first shirts. Two color schemes on this one, I think. This is, it's not light up, it's just white cummy white um, and then there was a orange it kind of has more the logo scheme but not the pink so yeah this is the original artwork and then a discarded early artwork for fallen angel the ep a very few copies were printed and distributed with this cover a highly sought after collector's item the original original cover i guess uh for the seven inch and then the what it actually became one of dore's artworks yeah, cool to have. Uh, I scored, if you are a viewer of the um, Caught in the Wilds, you have noticed that the uh, first Bulldozer is in collection. Love the band. I mean, 
Yes, it's Venom worship, but more Venom is fine with me. And it's not Teacher's Pad today. Um, they do the right tracks, I guess. 100% evil metal. There you go. Never enough. I need the second one too. Then, that was a solo record. Then a small, I guess, just a Discogs, Discogs order from uh, New Era. Basically, because I don't know what else came in with these. Maybe the funeral wins that I decided I need more time. They uh, will maybe show up later. The missing piece. There are a few missing pieces to the puzzle that will maybe be the title. Um, there are. They had a few records that were just missing from the collection uh, that were not promised to me, but that I had in wait. Uh, for example, this was waiting at Charlie, but it didn't solidify into um, into existence. But now I have it. It was. I mean, it was not dirt cheap, but it was not more than was asked for originally. This is on Cold Beach, uh, UK label. And this is Albionic Hermeticism, Psalms to the Father. <clears throat> the French-English dude that I talked about a lot, that I always promise that I will try to talk more. But it's basically black metal in the vein. Go with me in the, the CW that camp but then European I guess there is no twang in here it's just very well played like I always said about Albionic Hermeticism very well played through the entire discography the Aldrich stuff is good uh, it's not Odysseus Odysseus is harsh and fits but yeah finally in collection he decided not to go for the um, the twine Obi strip that Obius his has but yeah very cool and like I said, maybe it's be quickly becoming my favorite of him. I now have, I think, four LPs of his work. Love this one to death. There we go. Some silvery clear vinyl on that one. All I need now is Chlamydia to um, complete the cold beach because this one also came in from the man himself. Beautiful. Cheers to the pit crew. Ah. Then another missing piece on Dommedag og den femton jaktek jaktekken. So I had from Wagner Udegaard. I did my best. This was also lingering around in their stock all of a sudden. I think they do inventory checks and then, or from their own collections. Could be, could be. Uh, I've talked about this record a bunch, but maybe sit this now. Four so four years ago. I don't know if you were around back then, but um. When I had the time to take two tapes uh, to the hospital, when my Walkman was still working, that one. Uh, and I got this one and then so the silver and the gold one uh, that were out at the time on tape. I'm not sure what label may be self-released. But I listened to them over and over and over again. But at the same time, the vinyl came out and I never got around to pick up the vinyl. I got the gold one maybe half a year later, but the silver always eluded me. So yeah, these records are linked to the birth of uh, my son Sid, and um, yeah, every time I, it's kind of a portal. Um, another Klaxon records, I fell off with um, Buchmansia just because it became a lot. Uh, yeah, he has some very very interesting projects. I can't reach it right now, but yeah. Very good. The tapes were already beautiful. I still have the tapes there, I'm not leaving, but um, yeah, there is some cool looking artwork. Jules um, said this instant tattoo material going throughout the booklet, like stuff like this, I guess, which is true. But do we need more tattoo? There you go. Just another piece that you know, every record that comes in now needs to fit the story, I guess. Um, there will always be things that won't fit the story in a while, but those get shifted out. Wagner, nice. Then, Morbid December Moon. Uh, there was a deluge of bootlegs. Thing is still playing, Jesus Christ. There was a deluge of bootlegs uh, from the same label, I think, label uh, that uh, that is doing the Judas Iscariot stuff. Um, yeah. Good stuff. I'm, I stopped buying Judas Iscariot, but they had Morbid Angel and they had Morbid. Uh, this is December Moon, the bootleg re-release, but it's very close to the um, very close to the original. 
very true to the original, I should say. Uh, the cover is the cover. I think the only real differences is maybe texture, stuff like that, and, you know, authenticity. But it's on Reaper Records, cover artwork by Chris Rubin. That's one of the uh, things that is different. I'm not sure how the back looks, but yeah. I don't think uh, he was mentioned, and he's a great artist from Belgium. He did this. I know he did uh, Battle Cries from Liar. What else? Not sure, but yeah. These are little Mr. Moyen inserts. Um, I got the dubbed bootleg on tape not too long ago, but I just couldn't pass up on this one. I almost got an original, but yeah. Those are becoming quite expensive. And I think with, um, yeah, with Nessa Blood burning down, a lot of shit got lost. So there's definitely a dead crush satanic cross that is lost. I think the basement is a total loss. Um, there, I mean, there's war everywhere. There is misery everywhere. But to see that, that is um, heartbreaking, man. Uh, they have not shown pictures from the the throne room, as uh, I don't know how people call it, but I think everything's gone. Um, yeah, kind of ironic that <laughs> that it had to go that way since uh, you know their past. But yeah, weird, 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 weird world we're living in right now. Anyway, morbid. There you go. That's first band from. Sweden, I think. Could be making an ass of myself, but yeah, Sweden. Uh, he came to Norway or to Norway um, to sing for Mayhem, of course. Dr. Schitz does the liner notes. Morbid took a productive form in the spring of 1987, so yeah, four years after Bulldozer and a lot of other stuff. Yeah, Morbid, cool to have. I kicked away the plastic or the annoying plastic and I'll find a different home for him when he gets once he gets in he won't more with the Nessa blood to threw me off I need to regroup regrouped uh, I put on the compilation cross call just because it was getting a bit noisy and a bit heavy put on something lighter bulldozer are not the EP, but they have the rap, the first one. Still looking for the second one if you're holding. This is the Roadrunner, I think, European edition. Cheers. We're doing a shorter one, 22, so it's going to be an hour, I guess. But uh, we're going to the Dark Dungeon Festival tomorrow, me and Drew. Um, he's been popping up in videos. We went to England. He, we did an order together. So that is our plans for the weekend. For now, we are firmly still in the Netherlands because this is the, this is the last uh, pickup from New Era. This is the second Klang with Kristallen uit het Hemelrijk uh, on Hedens Hart, I think, but a, maybe a co release. Yes, Hammerbund and Hedens Hart 2003. They are self release tapes. I don't think they are too old. I think the split with Nord is from. 2000 yes yeah 2020 sorry 2020 um the corona years so i think stan Klang, same period as nord nord is a bit older maybe i don't think they're the same guy they're both from the netherlands i know there is some i'll show it first uh this is the last part of the trilogy i needed uh, with tracks like lucie de pracht the Dodemars Nevelrijk, Enkel het Leed staat gegrift. Great titles, three demos that took me by surprise. It is cosmic but raw. It is, it is not dark space. It is not. What's raw? It's, from, it's not fur. It's something in between that, maybe. Um, I also have a split with Nord, which is coming up. But um, it's called. One of the uh, split tracks is called Bomklank. There's a band called Bomklank. So I think he has multiple bands that all fall under the umbrella of the countryside, um, Longing for Lost Times, Hayden's Hart Sounds, uh, from, yeah, from their region, I guess. I'm not saying they're all from that region, but you know what I mean. Um, 
die uh, wedergangen gekeld. Wandklank itself is, is, a, is a band, so yeah. Boat of Noord en Sterrenklang are um, melancholic, I would say. Um, but I think the Sterrenklang gets my vote because it is more. It is all that and a very suffocating sound at the same time. So it envelops you, it takes you, just grabs you, I guess. The Noord is a bit weirder in the sense, in the sense that is. Um, he has another project, Owl, which is maybe a bit rawer than this, but this is his, I don't know, it's weird. Um, he has nine releases under his belt. He started in, I think, 2007. There is organ on here, there's accordion in here, there is some weird instrumentation going here. Um, the vocals are very Dutch, rough, uh, through some distorted filter. But then there is this solo guitar that goes through it that I think Bullgod described it on YouTube as uh, music teacher goes wild or something like that. So yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> very weird. I need to delve into the other stuff by him. Just found the promo for New Era, which I'll do later. But yeah, Stan Klang, Kristalla, very good. And so I have the trilogy and the split um, on vinyl. I think there is one more split, but I'm not sure about that one. But yeah, my new Dutch favorite bands, I think so. From within the last four years, um, completely missed the tapes. I don't know where this was, but you know, it's all self released. So. You are uh, never picked it up. It is also on, like the split is on, this is on Hammerbund and Hayden's Heart. The split is on um, Final Agony, which will come up. So, What is in here? This is the trilogy for the fans that really need to round it off. Lucie de Pracht is a mini LP. Then you have Kristalle is het Nevelrijk, the LP. And then the third one is Het Strijdperk van de Vergankelijkheid. First three outputs out now on Vinyl Primitive and Monotonous Isle. Isolationist black metal, oppressive atmosphere through external riffs, exceptional riffs, sorry, and songwriting. Remix for vinyl, which you can hear if you can if you listen to the digital version on um, on YouTube of the split, the Nacht Sternklang. This one upcoming. I the first thing I wrote down was hissy, uh, hissy production, but it's just the the tape sound that goes through it. Um, yeah, high quality and heavy vinyl pressing, no CD versions ever. So there you go. One, the time that I get into CDs, they stop producing it. What is else is in here? There is a heroin uh, makes happy sticker in here, which will go in a box eventually. What else is in here? There are medieval prophecy records. Stickers. There you go. They. I saw something today. There's something brewing there. We'll see. I'm not saying it's this because we knew this already, but um, yeah. We'll see. Upcoming show: Warmoon Lords, Black Sleeves, and Sanguine Relic. Uh, they're also playing in Holland. I'm not sure. I think it's Black Sleeves and Sanguine Relic, but we'll see. What's this? Old records from Amor Fati. Massacrement. Finally got my hands on the zine from um, yeah from a tape distro that's coming in and liking. I have it there. The um, yeah where I got the Polish tapes. There's a lot of stuff still in here, but yeah, nothing worth mentioning. The Nordstein Klang, like I said, uh, Nord has that weird weird instrumentation. What else did I write down? So hissy, yeah, not really. Uh, melancholic, stoic, a steady drum beat. It just goes on and on, but yeah. Uh, organ and accordion, weird <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but yeah, the weird guitar is just over the top. But I mainly got it for the steady climb. Split. He also has the accordion right there. Uh, one has, and the, the organ is also on here. Zwarte Ziel, Witte Ziel, and Wampklang on Final Agony. Uh, yeah, check it out. It is weird enough. Um, when I hear an organ, I think about my grandfather, so that's always good. No insert, it is Final Agony. There was this one in the entire drop with the Orlock and the Strong Bloods, and I think uh, the Finnish band, the 
die, not die serpent, but that reptile, sh reptile shrine uh, was maybe in there. But yeah. I don't any, I don't own anything by them. I saw them on a documentary once. Uh, and it seemed like an interesting band, but I never got into them. Need to rectify, but for now, more stem clone. That one came from the Finnish distro. Cheers, Sami. They don't have a presence on the internet. They don't have a presence on social media. They, they have a presence on the internet, not on social media. Um, because he said, I started this model. I talked to him today, actually. He started the model. It works. He don't need. He doesn't need promotion. He sells to his page to Discord. I'll link him. Uh, of course, but yeah, don't tell anybody. I did a second order. The first order was the big one. Uh, that was the last of the uh, my big sale, the cash influence or the cash influx I got from that. The very last sale was the second round uh, at Damnation. After, you know, let's keep it vague. Um, he had this for me to begin with. It is the Abigor book, um, and I said I wasn't going to do it after. Um, White's video about Abigor, but he just uh, he didn't show the records I uh, noticed while watching it again. So, and there is one guy who uh, kind of pushed me to get back on it. So, it's not off the table, but it's not here for now. Then we go into the order of yeah, the last order I set, uh, and then a buy order that just decimated the budget. Yes. Edgar into the uh, we're still into bulldozer. I was going to say to for what to round off the finish order. There is about yeah like five records and then not a budget killer but just you know the everything was spent. Akitsa, uh, <laughs> auprès de la mort triomphant. There you go. A later seven inch out. Yeah, in his career or out of his discography. Uh, that is. Maybe kind of overlooked. I didn't, um, yeah, it took me a while to pick it up. Um, it's a beautiful 7 inch on Non Shell Defy. Yes, I think it's a German label, I'm not sure. Uh, they did some cool stuff. I started looking into it after getting this. Just getting everything. I have a bunch of Akisa 7 inches, but it's through the listening to the last that um, the last full length, it kind of dawned on me that he was actually responsible for a lot of the. Iljarn shit that is going on right now in the best way possible. Iljarn shit. Uh, he had that folkish punk stomp through Akitsa the entire time. This kind of reminds of the earlier work, uh, like Guti and stuff like that. Uh, a black metal track, which is outstanding. Um, he does it all. And I think this one is nice because you see the different sides of Akitsa. I'm not going to talk about uh, departure chandelier life in Japan and all of the other stuff. Um, it is one of the regrets, but yeah, poser for life, I guess. Um, this is from 2008, and it is Le Grotte des Anges des Choux. It's the first track, pure blistering black metal. Then you have Notre Avant Guerre, um, or After War, is a dead punkish stomp that I was talking about. And then Auprès de la Mort Triomphant is a um, placeholder for this weekend it is a dungeon since esque track but it has those those submarine boom, that i like uh the dutch do it too here and there but yeah very cool seven inch this is number 420 nice out of uh, 489 there you go and silver someone hand number piece it has a tick slap up for vinyl there you go and then the Upside down crosses, of course. Never enough Akitsa. It is a uh, dense discography to get through, but um, yeah, steady wins the race, I guess. Akitsa. Old T on his best leg. Then Satkai Nachtwind. I finally took it uh, or picked it up. It was in the making because I think this is the last thing I need from him, except for the tapes that are doubles, I guess. On the Pach Mortel. Excuse me, his label. This is Chemin de Tenebres, or Road of Darkness, or Into Darkness. And then the Satkai with Satschaye und den Baum in the Mosswelt. Again, with the moss. Yeah, perfect split on Amorphati. 
Belgian band and a French band, Dunkel, um, yeah, had talked and raved about the uh, compilation that came out on Signal Rex at Plays. Um, Sapkrai here has a dirty, mushy sound. I've written down, look, I have post its uh, The Snare Madness, yes. Uh, it is very raw and is very dense in sound, as in every, it's just like a uh, but then the snare is, I'm not going to say it's Saint Anger, but that's what pops out. Uh, Nachtwind is uh, the Norwegian guitar sound. It just starts off with that, uh, very upfront. It is what it is. It's not pure dark drone. It's dark drone worship like Velas is, uh, like um, Diabolical Full Moon is Velas worship. Um, this one has a very slow drum beat, very slow for them. Uh, but then the hateful things he spits out just are laid over that thing. Um, it has one parlando, as we call it in Belgium, piece that is just, um, yeah, it makes the track, in my opinion, so a very cool split between those two bands. Um, he does the Sapkrai stuff on, you know, on his label, the tape versions that are always immaculate. He still has the, um, the Nachtwind tape now, and then the other one. Maybe I'll play it next, um, just to let you hear. Here is the inserts. Very cool that it is out on Amorfati. Still love that label. They do some good shit. It's some very good shit. New Evil Feast, please. I actually could not find the uh, the other tape from Rampart Immortal. It's I stacked everything so high that uh, yeah. We'll listen to some December Moon. Forgive me. We are going into the last part one two three four five, six twelve inches um should be nice next thing i think i'm not sure if i'm going to buy anything at the dungeon synth festival we'll see that could have been a problem uh we'll see what it yeah there's a lot of distro so phantom lira will be there beautiful there, Rhino Servus, Rhino, Rhinoceros, I guess. Um, I always pronounce it because the V is a U or the U is a V. Um, a American band that I know less about than the entire CW Productions stable. I think they're from California. I could be mistaking. This is the tape from 2013. I'm not sure. Yeah, 2013. This is RH16. Why I was doubtful is because there is no info on these guys on these releases. It came out on tape, and if you look at the um, if you look at the YouTube link for one of this, probably the one I link. <clears throat> there are a lot of people just talking about dubs of the tape because it was so limited. Um, yeah, always found it very interesting. Discovered them early on because of the Mania Ash Borer. They were in that vicinity. Um, so, to, I don't know, 2012, that period. Uh, this is the RH, not rehearsal. Um, it's somewhere between rehearsal sound, very burly, deep. What have I written down? Huge atmosphere overtaking the instruments. That's true. The atmosphere is basically the extra instrument. Um, they have always have these great covers and I love how the tape always was um, made for a bigger format because there were tapes first but then they always translate very well maybe this is the least I don't say this is a bad cover but they all translate very well to 12 inch format not that much info just black uh, but it is a clear vinyl version there you go this was the last one I actually needed although the Dead Serpent Shrine is also on the want list now just because of the final agony stamp on it. Not much info, no inner sheets, nothing like that. Um, it is hollow and cavernous at the same, it's hollow and cavernous, but a very burly sound. Uh, there's some soloing going through it again, uh, not like Teen Nords, a bit better, I should say. There's a lot of, it, yeah, it still is a burly sound. Um, drum sometimes is a bit of, off tempo i guess but it's uh and it's very harsh actually there's just straight on drumming but it kind of ruins the beautiful ritualistic element in a good way it, that it doesn't become melodic or something like that it's it's always raw er i guess um yeah 
pray who you Raw were, I guess. Speaking about raw, this mutilation with vampires of the black imperial blood. I had a real, I had a reissue on Drakkar, I guess, or Osmos, one of the two French labels. Should be Osmos, with a fire breathing Minach. Minach. This is the. Um, I always love this one because this is originally from '95, I think, a year after the Vlad Davis. Do I still have it? Yes. There's zero low end in here. It is raw in the sense that it is very clear, but it is 95. It is not Mayhem, but Norwegian worship. Vlad Tepes had, sometimes has that Attila vocal going through it, so it, make, it kind of makes sense that they would borrow from their, um, yeah, their French cave-dwelling weirdos that just went, I guess, from punk and grind to black metal, but that's a a story I've been telling for a while without telling the story. This is their best well-known, I think it's their most well-known, and this is the 2012 repress, or um, one of the first times it actually came out on vinyl, so let's call it an original, uh, on a dark adversary, Asgore, doing a very good release. I think I have the Grimly Reborn, and then the other one is... Not sure. Wheelchair guy and train, but I think. Not sure. Yes. Um, Platepas, like I said, is that more, not rock and sound, but it has moments. This also has moments, but in a very different way. It, in the way that is very ritualistic, vampiric. You can almost believe that they live in that castle, that the, the wheelchair was parked in the garden of the castle. That entire mid-building um, into the shadow realm of the French black metal that is Le Légion Noir. I need the pictures alone. This, but the, this is actually my favorite one because of the stare that he has um, right there. Like I said, this is the Dark Adversary Productions. This is number four. Um, I knew it because he presented the package at one time, I think a year ago. It was 120 from Australia for all the three of them. Ruined uh, the other one and then this. But I didn't pick it up. But yeah, got it now. He has a dark chrome shirt. That's the first time I see that. Really. So yeah, cool. Always something new. Good release. I think I have the first one. It's definitely like gatefold. I'm not even sure if it's a, um, a single or a double, but this is a double very nicely pressed version of this classic. There you go. Two of the stalwarts, Flatepas and Mutilation. Shit costs a lot of money. The tracks on here that pop off, as they say, as the kids say, I still hope, are the um, whatever is really vampiric, like uh, Transylvania, of course. I, they kind of took that shirt and then made a band. That's how I can uh, explain mutilation without ever uh, hearing it, or to people that never heard it. He has another Dark Throne shirt on right here. A different one, I think. So yeah, that should teach you everything. The inside as shown, yes, double LP, talked about it. There you go. It is a classic, but yeah. Is it their best? That is up for you guys. I need more comments. Just because I'm bored, I guess. Mutilation. Stalwart in the collection. Then, another thing that is becoming a stalwart, and I'm going to already talked about them in the tape portion, but this is um, this is their record from... This is Sarcophago, I'm sorry, with Crust. And this is their record from um, 2000. And it came out... Light is shining. Man. It came out to Cogumelo, uh, where the original stuff came out, um, Brazilian label, extraordinaire. This is put out through Satanic Skinhead Propaganda, I think. Um, Satanic Skinhead in 2008, so eight years later they put it out, or Antichrist Kramer, I think. <laughs> I was confusing it with Wagner Udegaard, and that was a weird name, but Antichrist Kramer's label. 
I think I have one more of that label and then that's it. Uh, it's a very weird, very diverse, there's war metal on here, which there's war metal on here. Um, this is one of the war metal records. This is Sarcophago in 2000s. Um, I was reading about it and one of the general comments uh, was that Sarcophago should be hailed for not going uh, into the tribal, you know, <clears throat> where Roots, Bloody Roots um, from 96, that was before, but uh, they never went new metal. They just <laughs> kept it at this. I think this is their second EP. And if you know Sarcophago from the demos from INRI or INRI, if you know them from Rotting, uh, this is something very, very different. Uh, this is, yeah, the artwork is all done by Antichrist Kramer, handwritten, all of the lyrics. Satanic images of the, ooh, ooh, a lot of stuff is on here. There are titles on here that are easier to read, but yeah. Satanic image of the new millennium decay. This is basically sarcophagal on drugs. The there's a lot of people who hate it, but I don't know why. This is a pure war metal Brazilian assault to the senses. The fact that it came out on satanic um, skin up propaganda is even more is even better actually. Here is the logo, and then shoot Cogumelo or under exclusive license. I was going to put it on next, but it's just too much, actually. The fact that it is silent now is perfect. Look at the poster on this one. There you go. Fucking insane. And I should tag on the, um, that will come later. The Caught in the Wild will be the bonus for this one. There you go. Very thin records. Uh, there are inscriptions in here that are worth reading in the Death Wax. Um, First one is a fuck off melodic black metal, and the other one is about me, I guess. Fuck stamp collector black metal F words. Bundles of sticks that you see in Roman artwork. Yeah, a war metal record from the band that always had a war metal record in them. Um, they are the dead trash stalwarts that are sarcophagal. It's insane too. I never heard this one. I never saw this one. It just popped up on that distro and yeah, love at first sight. Um, I dig it. Hope you do too. I'll be back with the last three. You'll see why. Yes. Cheers. We switched beverages, something to clear the mind. Um, the last three are just, um, yeah, gorgeous records. The first one is the last one I picked up from the Finnish distro. I, um, in the initial order or the original order was this and then uh, Islands by Circle of Ouroboros. This is Uni Tuli with the Dreamfire or the Dreamfire, not with, um, yeah, one of the, it's weird to situate them because it, it's mid sort of Ouroboros, I should say, or would say. Um, it is weird. I still think they are a black metal band, but then this week I was listening and there's hardly black metal on here, but the in, I've talked about it. It's the intent. It's like how Carve Cross is black metal. But if you look at Discogs and you um, put their discography by genre it's like 60 releases which is insane um but 56 no yeah 56 are black metal out of the 60 as a genre they are black metal symphonic uh melancholic chaotic hypnotizing they are everything um but yeah this is one of their records or one of those records it's all very insane the quantity the quality uh, this is on hospital not gonna cry lyrics in finish they translated it here and there into yeah it's an english oh it's in english i haven't looked, looked into it it's one of the bands that i was or i am going to get into their lyric lyrical side but yeah to find the time and it's mostly in finnish so it's there you go Unti Turi has the translations. I've written something down for this record and just a J 
general stuff. This is from 2010. I've written down in the haze at, in my haze at work. Feels like a dream, an unconsciousness trying to break through, trying to tell you something that just out of realm, or trying to teach you something that's just out of reach. Stretching arms. Uh, a clean and rich sound, still very controlled, distant yet present, and especially on the vocals in this one, it's they're very present, but with the it's a weird sandy echo that goes yeah throughout the entire record, which is it just makes it a little bit more hypnotic, a little bit more warm, and it's yeah insane circle. Wish Islands was in here. He is looking for it, but he didn't find it yet. Two last ones, straight desk ox. Uh, I was going to I was gunning for this one, but he had this one also for a very good price, and you don't find this record for a very good price anymore. <clears throat> this is the Circle of Uroboros Cosmic Church split. I would say by now an iconic cover. Um, it is an owl, I think, um, with a cape stretching out his hand, but I could be mistaken. You decide, I think it's an owl. Stuff on the back. Two bands. Uh, I think I said it before. I think Cosmic Church got me into Circle of Ouroboros, but by now the seesaw kind of changed, and in the sense that uh, definitely more lyrical about Circle of Ouroboros than the other band, which stopped, unfortunately. There's another detail of the owl. There you go. Very good split. One of the better split. Reminds me of the Urfaust Circle of Ouroboros. Which, uh, they have some good splits. This is in Finnish. Yes, in Finnish. So it's unreadable lyric wise. I mean, I will do Norwegian, I will do Danish, but Finnish is a bit hard. A lot of ice. There you go. And then the very, very last one, which will guide us out, is the one that I'm going to put on next, my sleep records. This is Intet Hedensovsky. I told you I was going to do Danish. This is Seidig with the... This is the ultimate puzzle piece for me because um, it was one of the Natetale Korpsand related releases. I was still very hard missing. Uh, this is on Natetale, but this is basically, I think, if I had to guess, it was one of the Skjold records that was going to come out or could have come out on Skjold. It has that feel, although Natella always has you know, this kind of artwork, the wraparound textured sleeves. But yeah, this was one sort that was not in there. This was dirt cheap. The, uh, the split cost me some money, but all in all, to get this for the price I got it for, um, evens it out again. There's a lot of Danish on here. Um, Seidig is a one-man black metal project that has a lot of releases that are that were my soundtrack to the entire um, yeah pandemic period. Let's say um, this one was sadly missing. He has a lot of projects. Hen Bay, I think, is one of the Dungeon Sense stuff he is doing, and he is playing live at um, he's playing live at the Dark Dungeon Festival this weekend. If I think who it is, I already met him in London, but I'm not sure, so we'll see. I'll gush about his stuff. <clears throat> I'm going to listen to some more music, and I'll see you very, very soon, but I have no idea what. I've, ah, 